this is Stephen Bedard and in a previous video I started a series where I began to introduce some of my concerns about evangelicalism and what it means to be an evangelical today. Now I want to make it clear I'm not declaring myself to be a ex-evangelical or ex-evangelical as it is uh, more commonly called uh, that's not my desire here. It is rather to acknowledge that in this time where many people are leaving evangelicalism, I can sympathize. There are things that concern me about evangelicalism that have often made me rethink why I want to be an evangelical and what kind of evangelical I want to be. And so what I want to share today is uh, one that I do with much fear and trembling, and that is my concerns about evangelicals and the Bible. Now, that is a dangerous thing for me to do, because if I criticize lifting up the Bible, which is one of the, the distinctives of evangelicalism, a high view of Scripture, if I criticize that, that makes me look like a raving liberal. It makes me look like I am uh, rejecting God's word. And none of that is something that I want to do. I actually hold to a high value uh, of the scripture. I uh, uh, really uh, believe in the, in the uh, trustworthiness of this book. Uh, in fact, part of my story in coming to faith was in reading scripture uh, to uh, re start. Thankfully, I started in the New Testament and uh, began to read through and uh, was just really taken back by the description of Jesus that I found in the Gospels. And uh, it was a good news Bible, by the way. That was the first Bible that I ever read. This here, which is a new Revised Standard Version, was actually the first Bible I ever owned. You can see it's uh, it's seen better days, but uh, I can't I can't get rid of it because it uh, has a lot of of uh, uh, memories uh, behind it, and it helped me in my ongoing study of Scripture, and I still use it quite regularly. So, so what's the problem here? What could possibly be the problem? Well, my observation, and I'm, I'm going to try to not make a blanket statement to say that every evangelical feels this way, but my, my observation of what I have seen by uh, the statements of many evangelicals, at least high-profile evangelicals, uh, whether in books or social media or blogs or uh, speaking at events, is that they lift the Bible above Jesus. Now, they would absolutely deny that. They would say that, of course, they don't, they don't do that. But when you look at the things that are being said and that the way the Bible is talked about, compared to the way Jesus is talked about, it really looks like the Bible is where their faith is. That they... Uh, put their faith primarily in the Bible, and then secondarily in Jesus. Now, I, I, I know exactly what the response is. The response is, we don't know anything about Jesus until we read the Bible. And, of course, I, I, I realize that, that that's uh, really important for us to, to study the Gospels and to, and to know what it says about Jesus. Well, I'll give you a couple examples of what I mean by these concerns. I've done some some online polls, and I have asked a number of questions, and, and I did it separately because I didn't want people to think that I was uh, talking about the same thing because I really wanted them to, to give me, uh, I wanted to look at these issues separately rather than to try to pit the Bible versus Jesus, which usually when you do that, it gets people very upset. And so uh, the question I asked was, um, do you believe that Jesus could have made a non-theological mistake in his life. So what I mean by that is uh, he, uh, when he was learning to walk, did he stumble at all? Or when he was learning to speak Aramaic, did he have any grammatical mistakes that he made? 
uh, as a carpenter. Did he make any mistakes in his work uh, that he was doing as he was apprenticing with his father Joseph? Uh, did he ever make a mistake that had nothing to do with um, God or theology or uh, the Old Testament or anything like that? Just did he make a mistake? And a good number of people were open to that. They could say, yeah, yeah, they could see how he probably made a mistake like that. Um, of course, when he's uh, speaking in his ministry as recorded in the Gospels, uh, that that is absolutely trustworthy. He, there was never any error in that. Um, when he was um, revealing the kingdom of God, that was absolutely accurate. But these other things, yeah, maybe. We could see how there would be an error there. And then separately, I asked a question. When it comes to scripture, uh, aside from what it says theologically, so what it says about God, what it says about salvation, that the nature of Christ, all of those things, could there be any errors in there? So maybe a geographical error or some kind of historical error or what would seem to be a scientific error, if you want to suggest that the Bible even speaks about science. And I got a pretty firm response there. Absolutely not. There is no way that there is any error in this book. Anything that it speaks of, it is purely inerrant, no matter what. Well, that's interesting. Okay, now I'm not arguing against the inerrancy of Scripture here. I'm just making an observation that the evangelicals that I was talking to could much easier see Jesus having made a mistake than the Bible making a mistake. Interesting. What does that say? One of the things I also see when uh, I visit a website or uh, a description of a church, if they want to acknowledge that they are a very faithful congregation, they will put something like uh, they're a Bible-believing church. Bible-believing church. Now, we have to realize that there's no church that's going to say that they're not a Bible-believing church. Well, maybe there are some few outliers that would say that. But in general, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you are Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox, even Jehovah's Witness and Mormons, if you ask them, are you Bible-believing, they would probably say, yes, they are Bible-believing. Every uh, group that is based around Scripture in some way uh, is going to say they're Bible-believing. So when, uh, when a church self-identifies as Bible-believing, what they're trying to say is, we really take this seriously. This is really important to us. But I find very few churches that would self-identify specifically as Christ-following churches. Uh, they would want to say they're Bible-believing, but not necessarily uh, label themselves as Christ-following. Now, of course, they would not deny that they're Christ-following, but what they the message they really want to get across is that they're Bible-believing, because that is the key. Uh, it's, uh, there are lots of people who follow Jesus but have gone off the rails because they don't take the Bible as seriously as they should. But isn't it also possible that there are a lot of people who follow the Bible very closely and don't take Christ as seriously as they should? Is that not possible? So in these discussions I've had with people, uh, I, I do get the sense that they are more zealous for defending Scripture and for uh, making sure that they are holding to a very tight and neatly defined description uh, of this book, even more so than living out the life that Jesus proclaims in the Gospels. Now, I know one of the dangers when I talk about that is that you're going to get the people who say that, you know what, we should just follow the Gospels. Like, all we really need is a four-book Bible. If we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, we can just follow what Jesus said, and we can forget about everything else. And that's not what I'm saying. I would say uh, two of my favorite books of the Bible are James and 1 John. I love those books. They're, they really are some of my favorite. So I am not saying that we should get rid of everything that's not Jesus. However, 
we should primarily understand ourselves as followers of Jesus rather than followers of a book. Because you have to realize the first Christians did not have this book. Uh, even there's some uh, debate over whether the full Old Testament had even, uh, their canon had even been closed. It may have happened uh, after the destruction of the temple, that the writings were finally decided what was going to be in there. But even if you accept that the Old Testament canon was closed by the time of Jesus, definitely not the New Testament. And so there were people who knew stories about Jesus, and that was enough for them to follow Jesus. And they were just as... We would never say that the Christians in Acts who didn't have a Bible, a New Testament to follow, we would never say that they are less spiritual or less faithful than we are uh, just because we have the New Testament. Uh, most often we strive to be like the first century Christians. So isn't it really more important for us to follow Jesus than to fight over uh, a specific interpretation of Scripture um, trying to to divide up over uh, some of these other things. So again, I don't want to say that the Bible is unimportant. I have been studying the Bible for a long time. I have degrees in uh, New Testament and biblical studies, and it is really, really important to me. And I agree that we learn uh, about Jesus through the scripture. But if we all uh, really take some time to, to look at our hearts, it's easy for us to put this book first before Jesus. It is something that can actually happen. And before you're too quick to say, no, 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 that's not the way it is, just really take some time. What is it that really will get you going? What is it that you are most zealous about? Uh, are you most zealous for that interpretation of Scripture? Or are you most zealous for living out the life that Jesus gives us, uh, that he presents to us, that he uh, calls us to live out in our world? We have to ask those questions. And my fear is that many within evangelicalism have uh, rightfully uh, honored this book, but have honored it above Jesus. And that is a problem. I would love to hear what you think about this. Uh, do you believe that there are uh, parts of evangelicalism that have lifted up the Bible over Jesus? I, I would love to hear what you think of that. Uh, am I off the rails? I would love to hear about that as well. Please leave a comment. Uh, take some time to subscribe to my channel. And also visit me at my website, stephenjbedard.com. Thank you and God bless.